and welcome back to the shed. It's been quite a long time and we've had quite a lot of work to do in the house so this is the first opportunity that I've had now to to restart my workshop journey. Where we left off was me in the process of gluing up the router fence. So this is the base that I, I glued up last time and I've supported the joints with screws. This afternoon it's a case of gluing up the actual face and then attaching the base to the face and but that will be for another day. You'll remember from last time the pair of cutters that I'd got for cutting the tenons I'd got a pair of 10 millimeter cutters well, since then I have bought a pair of 12 and a half millimeter cutters as well that means I can pair the the two up and I've also gone for the longer arbor I've been able to find somebody to to make one and because we wheeled and don't do one that this that is this big that means I can leave that set at the tenon width and that for the tenon height and so once I've got that set that doesn't need to move and I can do so many things very repeatably but that's for another day but that that's where we are with that point so next thing to do is to actually glue this up so we've got the braces we've got that will go into there and there so actually I am going to be doing it all today just thinking th th thinking all this through so let's make a start so here we've got the base fitted into the the face of the fence and I'm just before I do anything I want to make sure that this is going to be square because unless this is square what's the point of carrying on now that sounds good doesn't it I'm not thinking of doing anything drastic but this has to be square because otherwise the whole thing will be useless there's quite a big gap just here so that will be a case of trying to ease the whole thing side is nice and square just there but the whole thing needs to move is still too far forward 
So the whole thing needs to move. The top needs to move that way while the base doesn't move at all. So let me think. Let's put these two in and I will screw the base into place. That way the base will not move. This won't move. That's better. That's good. So there's just a little bit more on this side. that all of this was working before I started the gluing process because if there were any adjustments needed then I need to make them now okay so that's the concept done What I'm going to do now is, before I start the gluing process, I will drill some of the holes so that in here and here, I drill those holes so that I can screw into the braces and I want to screw into this rebate here it's going to be easier to screw to drill from this side and that way everything will line up so okay now I know everything works nicely let's start drilling then I can countersink from the other side and then I can start gluing. Now one thing you won't have seen when I did this was the actual screwing in process. Now, because of the thickness of this fence I'm using 5mm 2 inch 50mm uh, screws and so that needs the 5mm drill to go through here and when it's all glued up I will then drill the pilot hole for going into all the braces. So, and I will be putting a series of holes in this big rebate here as well so that the base is firmly attached to the face. So 
those are the uh, rates done, just there. And that's good. So you notice, that's why I think those have gone through. And so just get some idea of what's going where, how, why. Right, just do this. Base, rebate. I think there'll be three screws on either side. The one thing I have found, the sharpness of the tools makes all the difference. Using blunt tools can be quite dangerous because they tend to slip more. Okay, just grab the countersink bit and grab my cup of tea that's been so lovingly provided and we'll carry on from there. Right. One countersink bit, one cup of tea, we are all set. So, let's start at this one. And just check those countersinks are deep enough. if you get at the correct size screwdriver. That's nice and flush. giving me some idea how deep they need to be. Okay, let's crack on. And one thing I've discovered Beach burns quite quickly and you won't be able to smell it but the smell of burning from this bit is quite pronounced. But that's those done. There's only two left that I'm not quite sure how to deal with and that's these two, sorry these three here. So, um, let me think, that's the tea track that will go there, none of those screw holes will interfere with the holes that I've just made. But it's the the that one, that one and that one that because they are right on the edge of the rebate for the T track, I can't quite get the countersink bit in. Might be a case of just repositioning those, re-drilling them. It won't make any difference. So that one needs to 
come up slightly and to be honest if I put those here where's the bit bit no. if I drill down there right next to that shelf oh, it should be fine yeah let's re-drill those I can get the screws in there very nicely I can countersink the heads The three head, three holes that I did cut in slightly the wrong, the wrong place won't make a blind bit of difference. You'll hardly notice them. Okay, so that's that. All I've got to do now, and that was hot. is get the glue and start the gluing oh and boy this is a lovely cup of tea or for the more pedantic among anybody that's watching it's a cup a nice cup of nice tea okay so that's glued or gluing but before I put any screws in to lock things into place I need to make sure that everything is square everything down I am looking forward to is being able to reclaim some of this bench from a lot of the rubbish. So get rid of some of the excess glue that's just seeped. Let's now square everything up. Square. Okay, that's the drill. These are the screws. But of course, I need to drill the pilot in the other side
rid of the glue that's now on the bit. step of the way that that is remaining square because you may have noticed that that just jumped slightly the last thing I want is to be making it untrue that's fine No, I can't. So, but that is now screwed to the dust extraction housing. That's given it more rigidity. sure why that didn't take but we'll soon find out the excess that's squeezed out and 
wipe it off the fence. is still to do and Is nice and true still I'm so glad with that so there are just the two screws left for this fine these final braces I'm only going to use 25 mils for this. I don't need anything bigger. done. I am an idiot, but then you already knew that didn't you? That needed to be in there before I glued it up. I am an idiot. Because there is now no way that will go through there. Is there any way I can I can do that? That's fine. That goes through there nice nicely. But 
but that was going to be on the inside to keep everything nice and tight. So it's too late to dismantle everything now because the glue's starting to go off. So what to do? What to do? I could mastic that into place. I'll have to think about that one. But apart from that one big mistake and just putting the T-tracks into place, that is Router fence mark two done. So just left to tidy things up now, put things away after a fashion. I will get into this habit. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Well, things have worked out better than I thought. I was just in the process of packing up and I thought I'd have another go at installing the dust extraction tubing and believe it or not I've managed it I don't have to dismantle the the fence I've managed to get the locking ring into place so I've screwed the t-tracks into place let me show you the finished result So, this is the final result. And round the back, that's all locked into place. The tubing, that was always designed to be fairly loose, but it is locked into place underneath the hood. I'm very pleased with the result and look forward to making use of it in the future.